Welcome to Writing and Balancing Chemical Equations. This is lecture 13. So let's change the slide here. There we go. Four fundamental questions that we're going to address in this lecture. What is a chemical reaction? How can you tell if a chemical reaction has occurred when you mix two substances together? How do you write an equation for a chemical reaction? And four, how do you balance a chemical equation and what are you really doing when you do this? Here's a definition. A chemical reaction is a process where one or more substances are transformed into one or more different substances. We have reactants and they're going to form products. The initial substances, of course, we call reactants by a chemical reaction. They're transformed into other substances known as products. Remember, a chemical reaction is a process by which reactants turn into products. A chemical reaction is not the substances that are involved, however. Example of a common chemical reaction it can take hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas and produce liquid water. So the reactants are hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and so the product is liquid water. Now remember, the properties of the reactants have nothing to do with the properties of the products. They are all completely different between the two different types of substances. Hydrogen gas is flammable. It's very flammable. You take a balloon filled with hydrogen gas and light a match on the end of a yardstick, and while wearing chemical goggles, Goggles you touch the lighted match to the balloon will go up in flames. Very dramatic. Oxygen, however, does not burn, which is contrary to common thinking. It actually supports the combustion of other substances. Substances that will burn moderately in air, which is about 20% oxygen, will burn furiously in 100% oxygen. So combining hydrogen gas, which is explosive, with oxygen causes some substances to burn furiously, which is what oxygen does, will produce liquid water. So if we combine hydrogen and oxygen, we get water, which does not burn or cause anything else to burn. In fact, water is used to put out fires. Therefore, the properties of the reactants do not have anything to do with the properties of the substances made from those reactants, the products. Here's another example of a common chemical reaction. Sodium metal plus chlorine gas producing sodium chloride, salt. Sodium metal is an extremely reactive metal. If you put sodium metal into water, it explodes. If you were to swallow a piece of sodium metal, it would explode after coming in contact with the acid in your stomach. You would explode internally. Chlorine gas is an extremely toxic gas. A few breaths of chlorine gas would severely damage your lungs. When we combine this extremely reactive metal with this extremely toxic gas, we get common table salt, which is kind of amazing. We go from two very hazardous materials into something that is required for life. Again, the properties of the products of a reaction have nothing to do with the properties of the reactants from which the products were produced. How can you tell if a chemical reaction has occurred? You can't always tell. However, determining if a chemical reaction has occurred can be a very complex thing to determine. Sometimes chemists will argue about whether a chemical reaction has actually occurred. Let's rephrase the question a little. Indications that a chemical reaction has occurred would be the formation of a precipitate, the production of a gas, a color change, or a temperature change that occurs even though we didn't heat or cool the system ourselves. Often chemical reactions release energy increasing the temperature of the system. You can feel a chemical reaction warming a test tube or beaker in the lab, giving an indication that a chemical reaction is occurring. Note, all of these are indications, not proofs, that a chemical reaction has occurred. They're just indications of what has happened. 
So we can form our precipitate. You probably wondered what that meant. A precipitate is a solid that is formed when you mix two solutions. You assume that the solid represents a new substance. If this is so, a chemical reaction may have occurred. See this liquid here in the burette being poured into the beaker, the liquid, and forming this yellow precipitate. So when we pour these two solutions together, when we pour them together, you can see the formation of a solid precipitate. On the next slide, the formation of a gas. This is a close-up of methane gas plume sprouting from the peak of a mud volcano. This is underwater. Methane gas is a product of decomposition of organic matter underneath the floor of the ocean and some lakes such as a well-known lake in Rwanda that produces methane gas. If two reactants that are not gases are combined and a gas is produced, we assume a new substance. The gas has been produced. This is an indication that a chemical reaction has occurred. Take a solution and pour metal shavings into the liquid. It starts to bubble, which is an indication that a gas has been produced from a chemical reaction is occurring between the liquid and the solid. A color change. To test for the presence of glucose, Benedict's test for reducing sugars or monosaccharides is a very well-known test. Benedict's reagent is clear blue from the presence of cupric copper ions. But when combined and heated to boiling with a substance containing glucose in a chain form, the cupric ions are reduced to a cuprous form and then oxidized to form copper oxide, Cu2O. Copper oxide is a brownish-orange substance that is insoluble in water. Therefore, a positive reaction in a Benedict's test is the change of the clear light blue solution to an opaque orange-brown solution in a boiling water bath. This color change indicates the presence of glucose in a given solution. If a substance that is blue turns orange, when you add another substance, you can assume that a chemical reaction may have occurred. Mix two clear solutions and you see a red solution created is an example also. So, another definition of a chemical reaction. The rearrangement of the atoms present in the reactants to produce the rearrangement present in the products is a good definition of a chemical reaction. When a chemical reaction occurs, no new atoms are created and no atoms are destroyed. You have to remember that. How can we describe the chemical reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce liquid water? So three key words about a chemical reaction is rearrangement of atoms. Description of a chemical reaction producing water. We have two molecules of gaseous diatomic hydrogen reacting with one mole or one molecule, rather, of gaseous diatomic oxygen to produce two molecules of liquid water, each molecule consisting of two atoms of hydrogen combined with one atom of oxygen. Can you say all these words with one breath? That is a lot of words to say. Can you understand what this says with one reading? It's very inefficient to try and describe what happens in a chemical reaction using words such as these here. However, we can describe it very efficiently using a chemical equation. So here we are. The equation at the top of the slide conveys all the information given by the long, wordy description I just gave on the previous slide. Plus, it is balanced. We call it balanced, which we're going to discuss in a few minutes. You can see there's two molecules of hydrogen gas plus one molecule of oxygen gas forming two molecules of water, liquid. You remember the little g meaning gas and the little l in parentheses meaning liquid. Things you need to know to write a chemical reaction. Chemical formulas of the reactants. We need to know the symbols for the type of matter, like little g is gas, little l liquid, s solid, aq aqueous. If it's heated, then heat or we can use this symbol, triangle, is placed over the reaction arrow, which is right here, meaning heat has been applied. Here is an unbalanced equation, H2 plus O2 forming H2O. It is not balanced because 
we have two hydrogens on this side, two on this side, one oxygen and two oxygen. One oxygen, two oxygen do not balance. Ways of balancing chemical equations that are not allowed. These are techniques sometimes that students and others will try to use and they should not be used because they're not appropriate. Um, one is changing the formulas of reactants or products. You can see here someone has put a subscript 2 on the oxygen trying to make it balance with two oxygens on the left. H2O is not H2O2, so we've changed the subscript. H2O2 is not water, but hydrogen peroxide. Adding substances to the equation. For example, just adding an oxygen atom over here on the right, now we have two oxygens to balance these two. You can't add or take atoms away from either side. Just adding an atom of oxygen on the right balances the reaction, but you're creating an atom of oxygen. Only water was a product in your reaction. You cannot change this. This is allowed in balancing equations. To balance an equation, search for a set of coefficients that con conserves the atoms. Coefficients are the numbers written in the front of the substances. Coefficients refer to the entire molecule. So here, we want to determine the numbers in front of H2O2 to get H2O. And you can see that we've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two oxygens, one oxygen. So if we put a 2 in front of H2O, we have two oxygens to balance the two oxygens on this side. But now we have four hydrogens, 2 times 2, so we need to put a 2 in front of the H2. So you can see balancing equations is an art rather than a science. You get good at it by doing examples. Now there's various hints and ways of doing this, and uh, we're going to continue with part 2 of this lecture on the second podcast for uh, this particular topic of writing and balancing chemical equations. Thank you.